Come on, come on, raise your voice one more time. All I need is you. All I need is you. Is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. Just take a minute and just lift your hands before him and worship. We recognize you as the one who holds everything in your hands. The word declares that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And all them that dwell therein. Come on, it all belongs to him this morning. It all belongs to him.
Lift up those hands and tell me. For from you I will be. That's it, that's it. That's it, that's it. Come on. Yes, come on. That's what he wants. Lift your voice and sing that. You are worthy. Whoa! 
That's it, saints. Oh, I feel like somebody's right there. Fall from you. Yes. Oh, that's what worship sounds like. Come on. Just sing it for me one more time. Just lift your voice as loud as you can. Tell him you are worthy. Yes. That's it. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it. Woo. Come on, I tell you to declare that while you're going through what you're going through. Come on. Let the devil know you still got to worship. Let the devil know that I don't care what you're doing in my life right now. But I'm still going to stand and declare that the God that I serve is still worthy. He's worthy despite the trials. He's worthy despite the storms. He's still worthy. I feel somebody worshiping for real. I feel like somebody's worshiping for real. Come on, it's okay. You got 60 more seconds. Just pour out your heart before him. Come on, pour out your alabaster box. Pour out your alabaster box. from which comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, from the maker of heaven and earth. He does not slumber or sleep. I said he don't slumber or sleep. Somebody lift up your eyes. Somebody lift up your head. Unto the head. somebody give God some praise in this place. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody give him a shout in this place. He is worthy to be praised and he's worthy to be lifted up. 
Hallelujah. Elder Julia. the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is exalted in this place this morning. He is exalted in this place this morning. You just let him know that he is bigger than the situation that you are facing with. He is bigger than the problem. He is bigger than anything. Hallelujah. Come and put your hands together for the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I bring you greetings on behalf of the leadership of this house. Apostle Andre Mason and Pastor Lencia. Praise the name of Jesus. We welcome each and every one of you. Come and tell your neighbor you made the right choice today. Hallelujah. Come and tell the person next to you, you made the right choice today. Hallelujah. Because you have chosen to be in his presence, in his house, where you can lift your hands, you, where you can glorify him, magnify him. Hallelujah. Come and give him a shout in this place today. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. He is worthy. Hallelujah. For those of you online, we want to thank you. And we want to let you know that you too made a right choice today for choosing to view online our service. Hallelujah. Where you want to exalt his name. We thank you for you and your family. Father, we give you thanks and praise for every one of us today that we have gathered here to worship, to praise, to honor, to magnify. Come and lift your hands and give him all the praise. Give him all the praise. Give him all the praise. You see, if that was for me, I could say thank you. But if it's for him, come and give him all the praise. Hallelujah. 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 Psalms 5 verse 11 that says, Let everyone that trusts in the name of the Lord, everyone that trusts in him, rejoice. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So you have not made a mistake when you rejoice in the house. Hallelujah. You have not made a mistake when you have chosen to give him the glory. His word says it. Hallelujah. And we just want to agree with what he said. Hallelujah. We just want to agree with heaven today. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. For his word is forever settled. Hallelujah. And he's looking for a set of people to agree with him. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. I pray that you will continue to be blessed during the course of the service. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give God some praise. Before we go any further, I just want to recognize someone in our midst. Minister Jenny, just give them a wave. 
We thank God for you. We thank God for visiting with us. Bless the name of Jesus. John 14 and 12 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the Father. Good morning, greater works. Good morning, greater works. Good morning, greater works. There's a time and a season for everything. And indeed, we are in a time and we are in a season. And I don't know if you know or if you are aware what season we are in. But there's a time to build. There's a time to break down. There's a time to destroy. There's a time to cry. There's a time to laugh. I am talking to you this morning, Greater Works. Do you know what season we're in? Mm -hmm. You must break down some things. You must throw down some things. You must uproot some things. You must pluck up some things before you can plant some things. My God, somebody give God some praise in this place this morning. We serve a mighty God. We serve an awesome God. We serve a powerful God. This morning we would like to take up two testimonies. And so if you have a testimony, you can come. This morning we want two extraordinary testimonies. Bless the Lord. You know the rules. Good morning, church. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. This morning, I want to thank God for waking me up this morning and for giving me the opportunity to come into his house, to give him praise, honor, and worship unto his name. I want to thank God for blessing me. Yesterday, I celebrated my 39th anniversary. And I thank God for all his wonderful years. He has been blessing, keeping, and for taking care of me and my family. God has blessed me with three wonderful children and two grandsons. And I thank God also for my beloved husband, who is always there for me in all circumstances. Pastor, you know my husband? He's very handsome. He's very good. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Um, I'd like to sing um, just one song. To God be the glory. <clears throat> Amen. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. So love he the world that he gave us his son. Who healed his life and atonement for sin and opened the life's gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice, oh come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise in this place. We thank God for a joyful heart. We thank God for longevity, longevity in marriage. Come on, give God some praise in this place. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's a little tough for me to give this testimony, but I will do it. Before I begin, I want to say that Jesus is the prize. Not the price, but the prize. You know, we seek for a lot of things in this life. We, we want to win prizes, maybe our a degree or get the best business out there, whatever. But I'm saying today, Jesus is the prize. And he is the one we should seek to win. Um, I was abused when I was a child. And um, when that happens to you, you lose your innocence and your... You never know what that is like again. But I was fasting for a, a three days during my holidays. And the Lord led me into that area of my life where I fought, you know, that had been dealt with. It's been a continuous healing. But... He led me to pray for purity in that area, in, you know, in my mind and everything. And this morning, I want to testify that I did experience that purity. And I'm experiencing it even now. And I want to thank God for restoring. And you know, the Bible says that we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So I'm testifying this morning of the glory of God and what he's able to do. And if you are in this place this morning and you have been affected in that area, let me tell you something. God cares about that area and he can restore you too. Blessed be the name Hallelujah. of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mighty God we serve. An awesome God we serve. Bless the name of Jesus. Before I do this, we would like to take up the tithes, the offerings. If you came with your tithe, you came with your offering. We would like to do that now. The baskets have been set. So you can make your way to the baskets. Bless the Lord. Yes, the world around and say say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? King of glory.
Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the free will offering of your people. Father, we pray, God, that even as they have stretched forth their hand to give, Lord, you will rebuke the devourer. Mighty God, you will cancel words of negativity that have been spoken against them. Father, you will breathe into the barren areas of their lives. Father, I declare fruitfulness upon them right now. I declare multiplication, O oh God. Father, even the little that they have and they have given it. Father, I declare and I decree God an abundance shall overtake them. Good measure pressed down and shaken together shall men give into their bosom. And for those who did not have to give, Lord, but their hearts yearn to give, oh God, today let there be a divine visitation. If there be doors that are shut in their face, mighty God, let those doors open before them. That when they come again into the house, Lord, they will give cheerfully. For it is written that you love a cheerful giver. So, Father, I thank you for that which you have given. And I know and I pray and I declare and I decree that it will be used continuously for the work of the ministry. So, mighty God, thank you for your people. Thank you for keeping doors open always before them. Doors of prosperity, doors of wealth, and Father, covering the health that they are able to arise every day, Lord, and to go forth and to prosper. So, Father, I thank you for them. I pray your continued blessing upon them and upon that which come out of their hand in Jesus' mighty name. And the people of God say, Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hand together for the Lord this morning. For truly he is a great God. Truly he is an awesome God. And truly he is a mighty God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Oh, a short testimony, not a big one. I just want to thank God for being able to be alive and well. To be 60 years of age. I thank God for that. Hallelujah. And I also want to thank him for giving me the opportunity to be with my dad. And to celebrate with him his 94th birthday God is able to keep but last but not least I thank God for stick to witness mm, in still keeping me floating and looking good because of his son bless the Lord yeah. wow bless the Lord 94 years old, 60 years old. Wow. Bless the Lord. Somebody give God some praise. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Someone lift your hands in the sanctuary this morning. Someone lift your heart in the sanctuary this morning. You are responsible for what you say. You are responsible for what you do. Somebody worship this morning.
God. At this time, I would like you to help me as I call on the man of God, our very own apostle, Andre Mason. We thank God for the man of God this morning. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. The goodness of God is unsearchable. And we should never desire to exchange the goodness of God for something that appeared to be a counterfeit. Hallelujah. Because one of the things we learn is that there are many, many, many counterfeits out there. And the power of God must become a reality in our lives. Come on, just move around, greet someone, shake somebody's hand. Let someone know that you love them, that you care. Just put your hand together for the Lord and put your hand together for the worshipers. Hallelujah. Come on, just put your hands together again for the worshipers. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to share with you today. I know last week we started talking about the issue of the spider. Uh, his operation, his hand, his movement. I want to take this from a different angle. I want to share with you today from the book of Luke. And then we go into Isaiah. I believe that we are coming to a place of restoration. And one of the things in my prayer time 
for the past two weeks thereabout. The Lord keep on reminding me of his promise. And his promise in our seventh year. I know many people look at God and look at sometimes what they're going through and they can determine by what they're going through according to the understanding that God is not faithful or that God is not involved in what they're doing. But when you know God and you know the word of God, no matter what you see, thank you, sir. No matter what you see and no matter what you hear, God remains the same with his promise. And things around you can appear to be falling apart. But when you know that it is God who is in it, and that God is in control, whether you stand alone or not, God remains faithful. Somebody you can touch your neighbor and say, God is faithful. Today I want to talk about the restoring of the temple. Because there's a place of restoration where the temple is concerned. And when God begins to restore his temple, whatever that is out of alignment and out of control, he brings into order. Can I say that again? And God can forcefully bring into order something that is out of control. Whether it wants to come into order or not. Because there is a set time for God's reveal. And when the time for God's reveal come, nothing can hinder that. You can jump high. You can jump low. We can go to the very pits of hell. And we can conjure up anything that we want to conjure up. But it does not change the fact that this is God's time. Somebody says it's God's time. It's God's time. I want you to go with me to look, the Gospel of Luke chapter 19. And then you're going to go with me also to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 56. But while you're at it, while you're at it, I want to read quickly from 1 Samuel. I want to read just a few passages from 1 Samuel chapter 2 and also 1 Samuel chapter 3. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, I'm taking the reading from verse 11. Again, 1 Samuel chapter 2, uh, verse 11. And then I'm going to go jump to chapter 3. In verse 11 of 1 Samuel chapter 2, it says, And Elkanah went to Ramah, to his house. And the child did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. Some boys say they did not know the Lord. If you go with me to chapter 3, the same first Samuel chapter 3, I'm going to read just about verse 6 and 7. It says, And the Lord... And the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call. And said, Here am I, 
for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. Just follow me through in Judges quickly. In Judges chapter 2. And I'm taking a reading from verse 10. In verse 10 of Judges chapter 2 it says, And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there rose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and served Baalim. And they forsook the Lord God and their fathers, which, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods, of the gods of the people that were wronged about them, and bowed themselves unto them, and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he delivered them unto the hands of spoilers that spoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of the enemies wronged about. So that they could not any longer stand before the enemies. Whithersoever they went out. The hand of the Lord was against them for evil. As the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges. They went a whoring after other gods, and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the, com the commandments of the Lord. Not, but yet, sorry, but they did not so. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of the enemies all the days of the judges for it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them and it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than the fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them they ceased not from their own doings nor from the stubborn ways. I want to just run quickly to the Gospel of Luke. In the Gospel of Luke and chapter 19 and I'm going to go all the way down to verse 45. In verse 45 it says, and he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein and them that bought, saying unto them, it is written, my house is the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And he taught daily in the temple, but the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him and could not find what they might do for all the people were very attentive to hear hallelujah if you go with me to Isaiah in Isaiah 56 
And we're taking the reading from verse 6, Isaiah 56. The reading will be taken from verse 6. It said, Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant, even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. The burnt offerings and the sacrifices shall be acceptable unto my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. The Lord God, which gathereth the outcast of Israel, saith, Yet will I gather others to them, beside those that are gathered unto them. Hallelujah. You can look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, his house shall be called a house of prayer. Hallelujah. Because one of, one of the things we'll find out is prayer is one of the most vital elements in our walk with God. And if we want to see things turn around or change, there must be prayer incorporated in that. Are you with me? So again, just bear with me for a moment. Because I just want to, I just want to read and I just want to share with you. Let's go, let's go a little further up in the gospel of St. Matthew. St. Matthew's gospel. And it's in Matthew's gospel, chapter 21. It says, and Jesus went, chapter 21, verse 12. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple, and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were so displeased, and said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus said unto them, Yea, have ye never read, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise. Father God, by your power, by your spirit, and by your grace, by your anointing, Father, let your divine will be done. Father, touch us, open up our hearts, our minds, our spirit. Now, Father, we can only do and say what you permit us to do and what you permit us to say. So, Father, let the hearers of your word stand, O God. Let the power, O God, of your spirit rest upon them, drop upon them. Father, change what must be changed and adjust what must be adjusted by your power in Jesus' name. Amen. Today I want to speak to you according to the word. It says here in Matthew, in Luke, in Isaiah, it spoke about the house of God being a house of prayer. It spoke about God ordaining prayer in his house, in his temple. So we speak about the restoration of the temple as is the will of God and many have a view and a concept as to what the temple is all about and what the temple should be. And one of the things we'll find out is that many of our views is not in alignment with the word of God. 
one of the things we'll find out is that if we really understand what God uh, wants out of us or requires from us, there are some behavioral patterns that are in us that must change. Can I talk to you? Because when, when we speak about the house of God or the temple of God, or when we speak about the synagogue, the place of worship, we are talking about a place where God dwells or a place where God should dwell. And wherever God dwells, wherever the presence of God dwells or the spirit of God dwells, there must be liberty, there must be freedom. And so sometimes you wonder why people are not set free and why people are not liberated in the house of God or what is supposed to be the house of God. And some of the reasons why people are not liberated or set free is because of their behavioral patterns. Sometimes people are not set free because of their perception, because of their mindset. Because they hope that the house of God should be a place that accommodates them. They are hoping that the house of God should be a place uh, that where, where you get bit down and where you get knocked down and you know where you get broken and all of these things. Uh, and all of that is so correct because the house of God should also be a place that breaks you but yet builds you. Are you with me? And so many people want to come into the house of God with their own ideas and their own ideologies and fail to submit to the plan and program of God. And the program of God may be different to your mindset, what you think the plan of God should be. And what the plan of God should be may not be what your plan is. And so sometimes if you're not willing to change and not willing to adjust, how can you come into the divine purpose of God for your life? Can I talk to you? When we speak about the temple, there's a Greek word, there's a Greek word mm, that is called bet hatifila, bet hatifila, which refers to a place where the Jews came to pray. And then it, it, there's also the next word that simply says uh, Bet Haniset. It means a place that is described as a synagogue, a place of assembly. And so the house that we dwell in should be a place of assembly. And there's, a place, there, there's another word that is called Bet Hamidrash. It simply means a place of study. So one, there's a place of prayer, there's a place of assembly, and there's also a place of study. So the house of God must be all of that. And so uh, the house of God is not just a place of gathering, but it's a place of prayer. It's a place of transformation. And if your life is not transformed in a place that is called the house of God, you have to check where you're worshiping. Can I really talk to you? And sometimes there are people in that very said house that will influence you to walk out of your place of assignment. And there are people that will find themselves in a place of disgruntlement. And because folks are disgruntled, they will persuade you to walk out of the place that God has assigned you, which is the place of prayer. Can I, can, I, can I just really preach the way I want to preach? Can I share with you? Because the, the term uh, a synagogue, uh, it, it means a synergy. In, 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 the, in the Greek word, it simply means synergy, which is to bring together. It simply means to bring together a people. And so the house of God is designed to bring together a people for the purpose of God. For the purpose of a given assignment in the earth. And if your assignments, you have not understood it, uh, that simply means uh, that you have to come to a place uh, of knowing 
So the synagogue is a place of knowing or a place of developing the knowledge of who God is. And that's why we read in Isaiah 56, it says that my house shall be called what? A house of prayer, a house of worship. And prayer is the embodiment of the movement of God. If we want to see things change in the earth, there must be a people who are a praying people. Let me just show you the significance of prayer. When we look at the life, and, and, and some time ago we shared this. When we look at the events in cha Acts chapter 19, I think it is, where, where, where uh, James was stoned and he was killed. And then we look at the simple fact that Peter was taken and brought into prison. Now the scripture said that when Peter was brought into prison, the scripture said that the church had gathered together in prayer. The church went, was engaged in prayer. Are, are we saying, is the scripture saying that when James was stoned that the church was not in prayer? We cannot conclude that. But however, it was specific in saying that when Peter was taken into prison, that the church was engaged in prayer. Because the church came to a place of recognizing that there is a need for prayer. And any time the destiny of the church, my God, is on lockdown or at stake, the church must come to a place of prayer. Because anytime the destinies of a people uh, is threatened, uh, the church must find a place uh, of prayer. And the people must find also a place of prayer. Because your destiny can be changed uh, based on the prayer that you pray. So, the synagogue is the location where people gather together or congregate. And the scripture says, concerning us, that we are seated where? So, if we are seated in heavenly places, that means that there's so much that can be done. But if you're seated in heavenly places, my question is, where is your mind? Can I, can, I, can I talk to you again? Can I ask you another question? If you're seated in heavenly places, why are you not free? If you're seated in heavenly places, why are you not delivered? If, if you're seated in heavenly places, why are you not repaired? Because if you're in heavenly places, that means you're in a place of endless possibilities. You're in a place where change can take place. You're in a, in a place where your life can be adjusted. You're in a place where you can walk in power. That you can go back home and not be the same person that came into the house. And so the question to you is, if you're seated in heavenly places, then why is your mind on earthly things? Can I take my time with this word? Need not have you fall asleep. I know we like the excitement and we like the hype. But sometimes hype does not always bring deliverance. Because you can walk out of here with all of the hype and by the time you get out the door, that word is snatched out of you. There are three basic names as, we, as, as I announced earlier on and I shared earlier on. Beth Hatifila, uh, B-E-T-H-A-T-I-F-I-L-A, L-L-A, which means house of prayer. It means house of prayer. Beth Haniset, Beth Haniset 
simply means house of assembly. That's B-E-T-H-A-K-N-E-S-S-E-T. -E -S -S -E Bethaneset, house of assembly. And, and there's the other word, Betha Midrash, which is house of study. So there's a house of prayer, there's a house of assembly, and there's a house of study. And all of these things must be incorporated within the house that you're dwelling. And you'll find that many people, many people can come to the gathering, because this is the gathering. And many people will not come to the place of study. Sunday there is a gathering, but Tuesday there is a study. And the gathering may not necessarily be imp as impactful as the day of study. Because the day of study pushes you into your place of destiny. However, the day of gathering can impact your life because there's a corporate gathering. And so a whole lot of people can be restricted and say, I'm staying home because I can get the same thing. But yet the scripture says, do not neglect what? The assembling of the brethren. So if I want to be empowered, I must come also to the place and the time of study. A person goes to university to acquire a what? A degree. To advance their future. To develop their career. And so they, they find themselves studying. Because if there is no study, then that means there is no degree. And there are folks who have never gone to an educational system. But yet they're in positions that requires a degree. And one of the things that brings them into such position is their prayer life. But I can have a prayer life and not have a degree that does not exemplify from a position that requires a degree. Because my work and my relationship with God is what causes me to advance. And a whole lot of people have degrees, but they don't have a prayer life, and so they are restricted in many areas. Can I talk? Can I really talk to you? What am I saying? What am I saying? What is required of us is obedience. Come, Sister Marcia, come. Come, run if you can. I know you can run. I know you still have everything it takes to run. Watch. Some people have degrees based on the experience in life. How many, how many of you have a life degree, an experience degree? Huh? I, I have, someone may not have the certificate that they get from Cambridge, Preston University. Hmm? Howard or Harvard University, they may not have those degrees. But someone may have a degree of experience. Huh? Can you, can you kneel long? It's okay? Kneel? Yeah. yeah. Kneel long. And when things are not going her way, the way she planned, the way she planned it out, she gets on her knees. Huh? She gets on her knees and she cries out when nobody sees her. Her spirit groans within her. Because my house shall be called a house of prayer. And we are not just talking about this physical house here. Her house, her temple. The scripture says that your body is a what? The temple of the Holy Ghost. So there is a dimension of prayer that should exist within you. 
But that prayer comes not just in, in words, Lord, my, uh, hallelujah, praise the Lord, but as a dimension of prayer because her spirit in her, so her spirit is in her that is being activated because of the events. And so when trouble comes, her spirit is stirred up. The best times of my life is when hard times come. Somebody say, Pastor, well, so what do you mean? Let me just tell you. When I'm at my best is when I'm at my worst. You know, like some people just don't want, but things are so hard. I am, see, I'm not eating. I was watching a, I was watching a program. It's alleged, alleged that there's a woman who had not eaten for more than 100 and something days. So, they were doing a documentary and they followed her somewhere in Africa to see if she, what, what, what she was saying was actually true. But when they did, they did some tests on her, they realized that she had not taken water for a while. And they realized that she had not eaten for a while. So they went and checked her out to see whether or not it was true. You know, based on the... And then it so happened that they found out that she really had not eaten for hundred and something days. They asked her what kept you. You're not eating. She said, I had no choice but to pray. Now, now, it's not possible. In, in our mind, it's not possible for anyone to go this long and survive. Because according to studies, the human body can, that's why Jesus, Jesus went, what, 40 days, 40 nights? Because the human body cannot go beyond that without water, uh, with, with, um, beyond that without food. But one of the things I've learned about fasting, one of the things I've learned, the first seven days are the most difficult days in fasting. Because within the first seven days, everything smells good. And you can take the smell of food uh, from a mile away. And, and during the time and the period of your fasting, the enemy always shows up. Am I, am I right? There's always temptation beyond measure. Whenever you make up your mind to fast, everything triggers inside of you. The first three days are hard. The first seven days is hard. And when you go beyond seven days, you can go for 40 days without a fight. But the key to fasting is prayer. The key to fasting is the word of God. So your food will be the word. And so while she's going, she does not have the degree that other people have. So she has some limitations because she don't have what other people have that brings qualification to them. But the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the cattle's and they that dwell therein. So she don't have the qualifications of her education, but what she has is the power of the Holy Ghost that is working with her, that is working through her, that breaks the limitations of man. And I'm not saying don't go to school. Listen, I, I believe, I wish, I wish all of our children would go out and get degrees. Become lawyers, become doctors, become engineers. I wish that all of our people who have no degrees would go out and get some degrees. Become counselors. Become psychologists. Because the church needs all of that. The church don't need only prayer, hallelujah, glory to God, and then we're struggling financially. The church don't only need that. The church needs folks who are involved in construction also, because what happens when we want to build? 
What happens when our people have some psychological problem that you're praying and you're praying, but the issue is not a demon? Ooh. What happens when the issue is not a demon? Because we demonize everything. What happens when all the person needs? You're not tired, right? Not yet. What happens when all the person needs is some counseling? What, what, what happens, what happens when, when our, our church folks need someone in, in, in the law enforcement agency? What happens when our folks need a lawyer? And you tell them, yes, God is your lawyer. We can agree because he's an advocate. But it's a different type of advocate. And so, and so you're going into the courtroom, but you're ignorant to the law. But you need a, a lawyer in the house. Uh, am, I talk, am I talking to you? We need lawyers in the house. But our lawyers in the house should not be abused. We, 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 need, we need wealthy people in the house. And don't tell me we don't need money. All we need is God. But money, the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. But it says that money satisfies all things. And so there are people who are broke, busted, and disgusted. And they cannot go to the light department and say, hallelujah, praise the Lord. My life is paid. No, 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 no. They got to come with the cash and pay that bill. Hallelujah, the light is paid. And by the time you walk home, it's cut off. And then you're saying the devil is a liar. No, the devil is not a liar. Your money that lied to you. <laughs> the scripture says that my father's house. Say right, I can give you. I can give you a chair if you, if you need, you can just rest on the chair. Because sometimes you get tired. And when you get tired, you have to just bow your head down. There are different postures in prayer. And, and, and prayer is not always kneeling down. There, there are times where you kneel down. There are times where you bow. But the times when you get up, because when the, when the situation is severe and dire, stand up to your feet. Just, just walk around, uh, almost behaving like you're going off. Be, be, because there are times where your prayer warrants you behaving abnormal. Uh, when you're in trouble, you don't always behave sophisticated, like everything is okay. The devil is a liar. I'm going through trouble. I don't care how you look at me, but my prayer will change my situation. Ah. Whether you agree with me or not, the Bible says right there that God brought the children deliverance because of the judges. Did you read it? Sometimes people can have issues. But the judge that God put over them is a reason for their deliverance. Wow. Ulu. God, when we started off this ministry, God said we'll not have premature deaths. We've not had a premature death. It's the word of God. And the Lord said concerning the ministry, after seven years, in the seventh year, things are going to change. In, how many of you remember that? Some of you don't. In the seventh year, he said, I, I will be revealed in a dimension that I've not been revealed in. When God tells you seven, just wait, five years go, and you're going through hell. Six years and you're going through hell. People walking away from you. People betraying you. 
people talking about you, people ridiculing you, people making a mockery out of you. But God said seven, God said six, God said five. And so you can wait until the seventh year shows up and you will see God. Tell somebody say, wait until that time, until that word is revealed. Though it tarry, he said, wait for it. It's going to tarry, but you can wait for it. He says, you can, you're going to marry. This is the man that you're going to marry. This is the woman you're going to marry. They can give all the trouble they want in the world. When that time comes, if you, don't, if you don't decide to walk away, can I, can I say that again? If you don't decide to walk away, when that time comes, he must marry you. She must marry you. Somebody say must. Somebody say be careful what you walk away from that God has given to you. Ooh. Because we can walk away from something that God has given to us, but because of the hell we are going through, we think it's not God. We think it's our imagination. And so we can become attracted to something that God never gave us, but our imagination produced for us. What is your imagination producing for you? It was not his imagination, it was yours. Leave the man alone. Leave the man alone, prophetess. So watch. Sometimes things are hard. Sometimes you have no control of what's happening around you. Sometimes you get tired. Sometimes you want to give up. Sometimes you don't want to come to church. Sometimes you get tired of praying. There are days where you just don't pray because you're tired. There are days where you cry. It's okay. You don't have to. Don't look at anybody. It's okay. There are days where you cry. There are days where you're hurting. And sometimes you come to church and you're still hurting. Sometimes you come to church and you feel broken. You feel empty. Sometimes you come and you hear a word, but somehow that word does just not bring about change in you because of what you are going through, because of what you're dealing with. And sometimes you sit there and you cry internally. I, I, I'm not talking to you. But my house shall be called a house of what? A prayer. But there were money changes in the house. There were sellers and buyers in the house. That means folks who were in the house, they were in the house for gain. There was buying and selling. What are you buying? And who's selling it to you? Don't be a money changer in the house. But uh, I, I'm not getting opportunities. Remember I gave you three things that the house should be? A place of gathering, a place of study, and a place of prayer. Three things the house should be. Three things Jesus gave to the disciples. They studied with him and they went out. They presented not a false sense of the Holy Spirit or a false sense of security. I'm not going to teach all of that now, so just bear with me. I want, I want two other persons to come. Come quickly, anybody, just two of you, anybody. Come, 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 Brother Jerry, come, because I, I, I may still need somebody else. Go over there, stand up over there with them. So watch. So there is prayer, right? Let me use, I was using my prayer earlier on, so let me just continue with you. There is prayer, right? There is study. And there is what? Huh? Gathering. So prayer, study, gather. 
Because the church is a place of gathering or congregating. So watch. So all of these three things are in the church. Now, help me, Father. Help me, come. Sit down. Can I come, come, Mr. Jerry, come. Come, I need one more person. Come, Ella, you're a giant, come. See, five, four, five. Um, <laughs> I just see, I just see right over. <laughs> I smell the blood of an English man. <laughs> Let me leave Ella alone. So the church should have operated in these three dimensions. But, but watch, go, go over there in the corner. Just stand up over there, all of you. Just stand up over there. The first thing that is killed in the church is a prayer. Then there's an issue of studying. Because studying, the lack of study restricts your growth. And then the gathering is affected. Now watch. In the church, what was there? There were buyers and sellers, right? There were buyers and sellers. And there was the money changers. <laughs> right? So buyers and sellers, money changers, and those that sat upon the seat selling doves. Watch what the church was replaced with. So prayer was no more. Huh? Study was no more. The gathering was affected. So the form of the gathering was changed because folks were coming to buy rather than praise. Folks was coming to perform rather than truly worship God. But my house shall be called a house of what? A prayer. So wherever prayer is lacking, the power of God is restricted. The only thing that is in demonstration is gifts. Yeah. Folks did not have money. They couldn't come to the house. If folks did not have money, they were not being promoted. Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? Are we seeing that happening in churches? No, I'm not talking. I'm, we're not talking about churches here. Be it. Y'all stop that. Y'all stop that. So, so watch. C can you bring that table for me quickly? Bring, bring that table. Somebody bring that table in the back there for me quickly. Just quickly bring it. Run if you can run with it. Because when folks begin to make money, they run with the tables. How are you, son? Bring your chair on top there. Right? You can live. You can live there. Come. The money changes. Where was the money? No, you said it, son. You can't put your stuff to sell. <clears throat> there were people buying, and there were people selling. So folks was buying. And the folks that were selling, they had no right to sell. And folks are selling in the church. If you give me, if you give me five grand, then I, I will lay hands on you and you will be healed. 
If you give me 10 grand, take that money out of your account and give it to me, I will give you the house. Who are you to give that house? Let me just, let me just. So what, what has been replaced with prayer, with study, and with the gathering is the operation of things. People are in the church and they're after things. The motives are... And, and then, if the motives are not right, how can they be healed? What's, what's the time now? Okay, 11, 11, 38. So watch. People are coming. And they're coming to buy. And there are folks that are selling for them. In the church. When rich people come into your gathering, they're not coming to buy what you have. But they're coming to be a part of what you're doing. And by extension, when they come, they will see things that needs to be done without you pointing it out to them. But when you know Jane has money, and Jane comes into your congregation, and because of the money that Jane has, she's promoted quickly without a gift. And when you, as a, as a minister, be it a deliverance minister, but you cannot go to the person that have no money, but you're going only to those that have money because you can get something out of them. You are nothing but a trader in the house. You are prostituting your gift. Can I say that? And, and, and it's the word. Some folks, some folks are of the opinion. Apostle, apostle, apostle is soft. Apostle is a soft guy. Apostle is a weak guy. Some, some years ago, one... One, one person said, Apostle, I have no testicles. But, but the easiest thing to get hurt is the testicles. <laughs> let, me, let me be here, let me be here, let me be <laughs> Very sensitive. Let me stop. 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 Okay. So watch. So there were buyers in the house. Buyers and sellers. Those who are selling would only go to the house of those that have. And those who are selling would only call those that have. They're only connected to those that have. Because those that have can buy from them. And it's easy for them to sell to them that don't know how to do it. I can tell you that you have a demon and you really have no demon. And every time I go to you, you give me $500. Don't you think I'll keep on going to you? Uh, but if I really have a love for the things of God, I ain't going to go. Because I'm not going there for the money. The money cannot buy me. The money does not influence my behavior. So there are buyers in the church. And there are sellers in the church. And there's a table of the money changers. The same Jesus that they had never seen behave in a manner of aggression. Ah, when he came to his father's house, 
he had to deal with the money changers and the buyers. Now watch where those that were seven doves sat. I'm, I'm going to teach that. I'm not going to go into all of it today, but I'm, I'm going to teach that. Three aspects. Three. So, so the seller of doves is on the altar. Selling doves. When, when you read the scripture, what are doves? Doves were used for atonement. Doves were used for sacrificing. And, and, and it was a dove. Because dove were also used as an expression of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> when John baptized Jesus, he said, upon whom you see the Spirit or the dove ascend upon. He is the one. What ascended upon Jesus? A dove. So there are false expressions of the Holy Ghost in the house. But because it's being sold by those who sat upon a seat, it meant that they had a place established in the house. But they need to be overthrown and dealt with. Bear me for a second. That's not possible. When, when Simon the sorcerer, the woman who brought him much gain, when Paul dealt with a familiar spirit that was working in her, didn't he deal with it? Simon, the scripture said, and Simon got baptized. Did, did we read that? But Simon saw something that he had not seen before. That the Holy Ghost came upon people by the laying on of hands. So, so when, when the apostle laid hands upon the people, they were now being filled with the Holy Spirit. And Simon said, can I purchase this thing? Can I buy this thing? And the apostle said, you and your money shall perish because the church is not a trading place. The first trader in the house was Lucifer. Ah, I know, I know. I know. The devil was the first traitor. Stand up, sir. Watch. Okay, have a seat. Five, five moments, right? Okay. Come, Lenius. I'll use you as a dove, right? No, you don't go. That's your, that's your master there. He sits upon his seat. And he have no issue. Because he's sitting upon his seat. And there are folks who are seated but don't care about you. If the person you're under does not care about you, are you under the right person? And caring about you does not necessarily mean I call you every day. Because I can be at home praying for you every day. And some things you almost got into, you escape it because of a prayer. Ah, that's, another, that's another something. So watch. He sat upon his seat doing what? Selling what? selling doves. So we realize those, the buyer and the seller, the table of the money changer, and Jesus walking in. <laughs> he was hoping to walk into the place. And it says, the scripture said, he walked into the temple of God. <laughs> it 
was the temple of God. Did you read that? Somebody read it for me, Matthew 21. Go into it again. Somebody read it for me quickly. We just read it, read it so you're supposed to know where it is. Matthew 21, yes, 21. Huh? No, go down to verse 6. But we just read it. Uh uh, go down again. 12. And Jesus went into what? Whose temple saints? He went into the temple of God. So in the temple of God, there were buyers and sellers. In the temple of God, there was money changers. Folks who were getting wealthy in the temple of God. Let's go. He cast out all those that sold and bought in the temple. So he, he must run. Somebody say run. run. He must run. Let's go. No, everything, everything. When he showed, he not worried about what you have, everything. Everything. So, so when you live there, you live there empty. Ah. So everything was overthrown. And, and, and then who? The seats of them. I, I'm going to go into this sometime next week, but just bear with me. I cut, I cut it all, all now. This is just an introduction. Amen? And the seats of them that sold the doves. Ah, oh, if, if you give me this, you know, you'll be filled with the Holy Ghost. How many of you have ever paid for the Holy Ghost? How, how many of you have ever paid for an impartation? And then when greater works understand the whole concept of impartation you run away because it takes too long but you don't tell people the truth never tell people the truth as to why you run but you run and you give them your own story one, one of the things I know that nobody can say about me is the apostle was harder Apostle, apostle may not listen to everything you say, but he will hear you. And when he hears you, he brings it before God. Because he can only do what God told him to do, not what you say. And, and some people, some people can, and I hear the Lord say, man of God, you're going you're gonna to be destroyed. And I hear the Lord say, man of God, uh, you, you're, not go, you're not obedient to the Lord. And therefore the Lord will judge you. But God didn't tell me he's going to judge me yet. Because whenever God begins to judge you, it's as a result of something that you're not doing. And God will give you warning. And let me just tell you something about God. There are some things that God will never show the ordinary person concerning his leader. And there are people who have conversations, who will have conversations. And because of what they hear, they make an assessment. Be careful who's prophesying to you. Because somebody can prophesy to you out of the spirit. And not out of the spirit of God. So the seat, because the seat of the money, the money, the, 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 those that sold doves, is going to remain for a little while. Let me tell you why it's going to remain. Because it looks like they're gifted. If you don't have discernment, you will never know it is a seller of doves. Can I talk to you? I'm trying to cause you to understand that in the church, in the temple of God, 
they existed. It was, not in a, it, it was not in any other place but the temple of God. So there were those that were buying, there were those that were selling, and there were those that had tables. <sighs> to have a table in a place, it simply means that you are well established. And it also means that you can eat at that table. Am I talking to you? Am I, is this helping you? So let's go a little further. So there are false expressions. Come, son. So I, I'm calling you, but he's supposed to tell you to go. You see, because let me just express to you. When there are false expressions of the Holy Spirit, people are going to go without being commanded to go. <laughs> Some, sometimes, sometimes you may see the same person. Sorry, I, I, I hope, I, don't be offended, folks who always manifest. But this may be to help you too. There are folks who are not going to fall. You know the matrix? They are not going to fall until somebody comes behind them. If God is dealing with you, if the Holy Ghost is upon you, you are not conscious of who's behind you. You just fall. Because you want your deliverance and it's not about who's there to catch you. I don't care who's there to catch you, but under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, you can fall and not be damaged. I was in church one time, in the height of deliverance, this woman, eight plus months pregnant, and fell on her belly. It was like a ball, poof, and stand right back up. I was fearful. Ask her, are you okay? You know, you know sometimes you can pray for somebody. And because of how they fall, you kind of just get concerned about them. I ask, are you okay? She says, yes, I'm fine. Because Holy Ghost cushions you when you fall. Even the full sense of the Spirit of God. My God, when you fall, your head's going to burst. Another experience I've had. One woman was at the altar. My God, let me tell you. I've had some fearful moments in church. And this woman fell f forward, knocked her head at the edge of the altar, and I'm looking for blood. I heard the noise. Because there's a song, you know, when you knock, it's like a hammer. And, I, and I'm looking, and I just said, woman, get up. She said, shake herself. I asked, are you okay? She just wiped her. And she went about her business. No pain, no discomfort. Why? Because it was not a false sense. I'm, 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 trying, to, I'm trying to help us. Amen? Because I'm a part of it too. So watch. Come, Paul. Wait, wait, Elder. Come, Elder. Come, Elder. Paul, you, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to force you. Come, Elder. Can you, can you carry him? You too big? Yeah, you have increased in a little size though, over. I don't know what you're eating lately, but is your back good? You think you can manage? Huh? Ben, Brother Ben, are you strong enough? Huh? Are you strong enough? You sure? Come. I like to demonstrate because some people may not understand through the preach word. And they'll better understand through demonstration. And so watch. In the olden days, the Spirit of the Lord came upon men. 
because it was not dwelling in them yet. So it came upon them. And, and, and when, when, when Moses built the ark, it was a foreshadow of things to come. So, so the Holy Ghost came upon men. Right? Ella, you're going to have to help. You're going to have to help Benny. I want him to go on your back. Can you sit down? Come, sir. Send him. Okay, let, let me go. Let me, come, come, come. Get, get up. If you're afraid to go on Benny, come. Come. Come on me. Sit. No. Wow. On my shoulder, you sit on my shoulder. On yes. Shoulder. Huh? You can, you're... Jump. Let go. Let go, son. You see, because when, when, is a, when is a false sense of the Holy Ghost, a Holy Spirit, things become unshakable. Come, you, you're not going to fall. Sit down properly, son. There, there are some people, I'm holding your legs. There are some people with a false expression of the Holy Ghost. They cannot go through much. They walk around like it's a burden. The Holy Spirit is never a burden and could never be a burden. And so, and so here it is. The Spirit of the Lord came upon men. Why? To do great exploits. Amen. Don't be afraid, son. You sit properly. He said it's fine. So watch. So people operating in the church and it's not by the Holy Ghost it's by a counterfeit so there's a whole lot of counterfeit expressions of the Holy Spirit in the house but God does not want the expression which is a false one so come down Get down. So watch. There are false expressions of the Holy Ghost. They were selling it and they were selling it because people were not familiar with it. But watch. Those who sat on the seat they had a place of authority. They had their throne set up there. And they could have watched. I'm looking to see who I can get some dollars from. I'm looking to see who is so gullible. And so watch what begins to happen. Come down. Come down, I'll teach you. To, I'll finish teaching. Come down. Go back. So what God was dealing with, what God was dealing with, what Jesus was dealing with, was the money changers that was in the house. What he was dealing with was those who were selling and buying in the house. And those who sat upon their seat in the house because the house was not in order. If you don't have discernment, you will never see. So what's being replaced? Come pray. Come pray. Begin to pray. Because the first thing the enemy affects is your prayer. Because your prayer is what builds you. Ah, you just pray hallelujah, Father bless us, cover us. 
all of a sudden you have no zeal for prayer. But then, when your when prayer is being restored, Rabba shike to robo nakinda nama andeske ti ando robo shiende inkandu skataya na God of Heaven show up. God of Heaven deal with the conflicts, deal with the issues. God of Heaven deal with them that trouble me. Father, I'm no longer going to be troubled by those of God who have issues with me. My house shall be called a house of prayer. I declare that prayer will ascend out of my belly devil you're a liar you ain't gonna kill my ministry you're a liar you ain't gonna affect my destiny and so prayer is being replaced Uh, then the study of the word because the word the quality of the word is changed through new age teachings and you will never know if it is new age teachings. Why? Because you don't know the word. So you're, you're, you're tossed about, come study. You're tossed about with every wind of what? Of doctrine. So you, you have what is called itching ears. So you run in here, you run in there. And you cannot have, let me just also announce to you, you cannot have two fathers in one house. Can I say that to you? You can ha- not have two fathers in one house. You can only have one father in one house. So watch. So the study of the word comes back. Come pray, come pray, come pray. Come here. Come word. Come here. The word is what? The word is quick and Powerful and sharper than any word. Two edged sword, what does it do? It, it, it pierces, it cuts, it divides, it separates. It's a discerner of the hearts and the thoughts and the intent of man. Ah, and, and so, don't take it out just yet, don't take it out just yet. Because sometimes you can move stuff early and it's not time to move and you can damage. You can damage an organization by dealing with someone early. Sometimes you can destroy your business because you dealt with a person too early. Why? Because of the influence a person may have. And some people want to have control over people. So when they decide to do what they want to do, it's easy for people to walk with them. Ah, That's another show. So watch. So the study of the word. The scripture says to study to show thyself what? Approved. A what? A workman who need not be rightly what? Which word? So there's a word of truth and there's a word of counterfeit. So, so the gathering, because when prayer is restored, when the study of the word is fully activated, the gathering come. Stand up right there. So the people begin to, begin to gather again and why they begin to gather again? Because again, the place is now a place of freedom. And, and, and then it says the blind came. Then it says the broken came. Then it says the scribes and the Pharisees, they saw the wonderful things that was done, but yet they have issues with it because there are people that can see the wonderful things in your house but still have issues with you because you're growing too fast. They could never give you credit for anything good. I'm, I'm closing in two minutes. So watch. So the blind came. So the, 
the table. It's no longer there. So watch. Come son. The blind comes. Where do you come in? Into the house. Who else came? Let's get into it. Verse 12. Chapter 21. Go to verse 12. So those who, those who had no sight, they were coming into the house. Let's go. And who? And the lame. Or, or, or some would drag themselves. Because they are lame. They are incapacitated. And lameness does not only mean in the feet. And you and you're not you're not straight. Have you ever seen anyone walk like that? They're lame. One man was lame from his mother's womb, whom they carried. The lame. Let's go. And they came to who? Come. Who is him? Jesus. They came to Jesus because he dealt with what? The money changers, the buyers and the sellers, and those who sat upon their seat. And so at times you have to turn over the seats of those who are sitting. Because if they're not dealt with, there could be restrictions in the operation. Let's go. Read for me. They came to him in the temple. Uh-huh. And he did what? And he healed them. So the blind came. If the blind is not familiar with the house, he will not walk straight. He did not leave the house blind. The reason why they were leaving blind, the reason why the blind was not coming was because there was not the presence of the Holy Ghost in the house. And, and so people would rather go to the Gade and the witch doctor and the obvious man and we have a problem with it. I need help. I heard about greater works. So I'm coming to greater works. I need help. So if the church cannot afford to give me help, I heard about uh, the witch doctor, John. And I heard John is a very powerful man. And somebody come and told me, came and told me how John healed them. John gave them a concoction that brought healing to them. And so, I went to John. You cannot tell me don't go to John. If you lack the ability to heal me, and you're unable to give me valid reasons why I should not go to John. The church must have power. The money changers must be driven out. And so watch, it was only when the tables were turned and the money changers were driven and those who sat upon the seat, it was only then that the blind came and the lame came. So the blind came and was healed. When the blind gets healed, you no longer have a need for the stick. Go back. Because he walks straight.
the lame came. And sometimes the lame also would have a stick. And sometimes the lame may not have a stick. Come rest on me. Put your hand around me. Put your hands around me. Somebody always carries the lame. Because the lame sometimes don't have the ability to come by themselves. So somebody would bring them. But the lame came, leaning on somebody else. But the lame went back healed. Let's go a little further. When the chief priests and who? And the scribes. What did they see? What, was it wonderful? So why do people have issues with wonderful things? Because they no longer have gains. That's why sometimes when you preach certain things, people who are gaining before you begin to preach and teach some things, they'll always be mad at what you're teaching. Because you open the eyes of people. That's why I always tell you, study for yourself. Know the word. So watch. So the, scri the scribes and the Pharisees, go ahead, finish it. I'm going to stop with, with that. And who? And the children. So when the house is impacted, can I get a little child who's crazy enough? The children are no longer sleeping in the church. Come. Yeah, we know you're getting tall, so that's okay. Are, are, are you crazy enough? I know you can be very loud. So don't behave like you're not loud. Huh? Okay. So just, just come from there and come shouting Hosanna. Just shout Hosanna. Come, come, just come. And come happy, come like you're excited. Sing it. Because the children got involved in the worship. When the power of God is revealed in the house, the children gets involved. It changes how children behave. Come, you can go back prayer. Come put your hand together for prayer. Put your hand together for the study. And the place of gathering. Prayer must become a reality in your life. If you want your situation to change, there must be prayer. I need folks who are at a place where they feel weary, where they feel discouraged, where they want more from the house, and they require more from the house. If this is you, stand to your feet. Notice, listen to what I said carefully. If you want more, if you require more, if you are weary, stand to your feet. You believe that the power of God should become a reality in the house. Stand to your feet. You don't want to come to church one way and leave the same way you came. But you want to come and you want to live different. The money changers must go. The buyers and sellers must be dealt with. 
those that sit upon the seat must be dealt with. The power of God must become a reality in the house. This message is first for me. For me first. When I preach, I first preach for me. To deal with me. Because it helps me identify the areas of my shortcomings. I am not perfect. And I have not attained perfection. And so while you are dealing with the money changers in the house, those who are buying have to be mindful what they are saying. And those who are selling must be mindful what they are selling. Absalom was selling something to the people, telling them that he can give them what they need, that David was not capable. Telling them that David was a feeble leader. Telling that, that David was not anointed. David is not your king. I can be your king. Because I can give you what David cannot give you. And so they were selling. And if you're selling, there's always a table present. Or there's always... Folks who are selling always have a skill. They have a gift of gab. They know how to talk. Some of the most effective people are salespeople. Very effective salespeople. That's why I can always say find something to sell, but make sure you're selling the right thing. And so, the Holy Ghost, Jesus came into the house. And when Jesus came in the house, he dealt with all of this stuff that was wrong. You on your own cannot deal with the stuff that are wrong. Because you can try and you can affect the program of God. If the counsel you're getting is not the right counsel, check the person that the counsel is coming from. There are other scriptures that we can give as I say, we, we're just touching it. We're just touching it. It's just an introduction. The restoring and the rebuilding of the temple back to its original place and state. And so if you are standing and you're saying, God, more can be done in the house. And I am willing to be a participant in this move. I am willing to commit to this move. You can come. If you're not ready to commit, don't come. But if you're willing and ready to commit to this move of God, come. You're not being asked to give something that you cannot give or something that you don't have. A new thing he's doing with us. It begins in the house. It trickles to our homes. It goes beyond us. Because the new thing has nothing to do with you, the individual, but everything to do with the purpose of God. Everything to do with the move of God. 
what he's doing. Prayer must be restored. What he's fighting is your prayer. Your faith is on lockdown. James was a representation of wisdom. What the church, what, what the enemy always tried to kill is the intelligence of the church. Wisdom is a technology that God has given to us. And the first thing Herod did was to kill James. So the church lacked the wisdom. But faith was still there. He kept Peter, the representation of faith. Peter, right there, locked in prison. But faith needed some prayer to be activated because faith fell asleep in the prison. So your faith can fall asleep in your imprisonment. What has imprisoned you? Faith can fall asleep in prison. But faith must be awakened through prayer. And prayer awakens faith. If any man lack faith, the scripture said, let him. Let him do what? Let him ask. Lift your hand right there. This is your place of commitment. I'm not telling you what to say. This is your place of commitment. You can commit you to God. What you have, what's in your hand, your capacity, your ability, what's in your hand, what do you have in your hand that God can use? Who's influencing your behavior? Can you do more than what you're doing? How impactful are you in the house? Is your gift, is your talent, is your ministry on lockdown? You can unlock it. The church must be a place of truth. The church must be a place of vulnerability. It must be a place of commitment. Where are you in God's program? Lift your hand right where you are. Talk to him for a moment. Just speak to him. I just want you just to speak to him. One of the things about this ministry is that we have never persuaded anyone in this ministry to get baptized. Never. Everyone whom we have baptized have come willingly, willfully, and say, Apostle, I want to get baptized. Yesterday we had three children from 10 years to six who got baptized. Three. They were happy. They were excited. And one of the things I've come to realize, wow, when we first began our ministry, we baptized two children. And now we are on a trend to a new move. We baptized three. The children must be stood up. Lift your hand right where you are. Just lift your hand. Just lift your hand. Just lift your hand. It's a time of commitment. It's a time of surrendering. Can you surrender what you have to him? Can you surrender who you are to him? Can you surrender it? Can you give it up? Can you say, Lord, it's just about you. I give you my all. Can you say that? What I have, my gifts, my talents, my abilities, all that I have, I give it to you for your service. I surrender me. 
Just lift your hand right there. Father, this is a new beginning. Let the money changers, God, be dealt with. Those who sit upon this seat, selling doves. Those who are buyers and sellers in the house, let them be dealt with. That your people can advance. That your kingdom can be advanced in this house, in the homes of your people. That your people can be excited about ministry. That your people can be excited about life. That they can embrace the journey that they're on. Father, I pray for your divine will concerning the life of your people. Where they are broken, where they are wounded, where they are blind, where they lack discernment, where they lack the operation of the prophetic, where they lack, oh God, the dimensions of the apostolic, where they lack the dimensions, oh God, of the ability to teach, the ability to be grounded, oh God, the ability, oh God, to guard, to ground your people. To empower your people, to embrace your people. Father, touch today. Do a new thing with us. Let us spring forth today that God, we will walk in holiness. That God, we will walk in righteousness. Father, eradicate. Take away what must be taken away. That we can start afresh. Father, we shall replenish what was, what shall be, what must be. We shall have dominion. We shall subdue this day and this hour. Come on, just lift your hand. Just lift your hand. Come, leaders, come, leaders, just quickly. Just quickly. Just touch them. Quickly, you just move, just touch them. They have already committed themselves. Just touch them. Shalamando. Mm. Oh. In this new move, the children get involved. Yes. One, two, three. Now, touch the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, fresh stirring. Mmm. A fresh stirring. Come, come, Pastor Mason, come. Come. 
Pray for for me. Touch, lift your hand. There are many things God is going to do. Don't get weary. Don't get weary. Don't get tired. And don't get frustrated. There are many things that are set to frustrate you, to weigh you out. The Lord says, if you can just hold on, he shall bring to pass his word concerning you. You will do well. You will do well. Just wait on him and let him do it with you and for you. Spirit of God, touch in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. Somebody give God some praise in this place. We thank God for a tremendous word today. Hallelujah. Before we bring the service to a close, if you came with a seed, you would like to sow a seed, you could do that now. Praise God. We will be back here again on Tuesday evening for Bible study. We have deliverance in view fort we have online prayer on Wednesdays and on Thursdays we do have prayer and deliverance right here intercession as well and then we'll be back again Friday evening you guys are aware of the times and so please make yourself available for Bible study as long as you can make it to the house please do praise God shall we all stand come elder Julia can you come and close us off in prayer? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, we want all the parents to agree with us. We know that school is reopening and we are sending our children 
Now even the streets are not safe. So we should not be afraid because we know that God is with us. The Holy Spirit is present. So I want you to believe with me so that God can protect. I want you to lift your right hand as you yourself could whisper a prayer on behalf of the school children and especially the teachers as well because the teachers have been attacked at the schools and we know it is not uh, a present environment especially for the teachers. If it continue like this, it look like we will not have any more teachers soon. So, okay, um, we want the teachers and the children that are here, come up, please. The student, if you are a student and, and you are in the house, we want you to come forward, please and teachers as well. If you are here and you are a teacher, please come up front to the altar. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise. We give you glory. Father, we lift our children to you. Lord, they are the future generation, the future leaders of tomorrow. And Father, we lift them to you. In the name of Jesus, Father, from daycares to preschool, to pre-K, infant, primary, secondary, tertiary. Father, we leave them to you. All the universities, Lord, we leave them to you. We thank you, Father, for being with them. We cover them. We pray your covering over them. Father, you guide and you protect them. Even when they are away from us from the parents. Father, we know you are present with them. In the name of Jesus, we come against every spirit of incident, accident. In the name of Jesus, we declare, God, that when they leave, Holy Spirit, you go with them. You guide them. You be with them. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for ordering them their step, O oh God. You protect them, O oh God, from Others, Lord, that will lead them astray. We thank you as we build that hedge around them. And we declare, God, that you lift them by your right hand. Father, we place their futures in your hand. And we pray, God, as long as they are in your hand, Father, we know that they are well kept. So we thank you and we bless you. We cover the teachers. Father, you give them the grace that they need, Father, to get the job done. We thank you and we bless you for them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Where are the children who got baptized on yesterday? Where are you guys? Can you come? We're missing one more. Oh, she's not there. Just turn around. And face. Turn around. Come on, Greater Works. We thank God for them. Newly baptized. You can do better than that. Give God some praise. Thank you very much. Thank you. You can go back to your mommy. 
Hallelujah. The angels in heaven rejoice when a soul comes to repentance. Shall we all stand? Praise the name of Jesus in your time of prayer. We want you to lift uh, Deaconess Menta in your prayer, Sister Mary, short Sister Mary that used to be with us. Now she is in Martinique and she is not too well. Please lift her in prayer. And also those of you who know Tristan, that's si Sister Chattel's son, please lift him in prayer as well. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless you. We thank you for everything that was said and done here. We pray, God, that as we leave this place, not without your presence. Father, you go before us and you make every crooked path straight in the name of Jesus. And I declare, God, that this week will be a blessed week a productive week. We thank you, Lord, that you touch and you lift every family that is here. And Lord, we will not keep what we hear to ourselves, but Father, we will, we will share it with others. Father, the goodness of God and that they too can come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Bless and keep your people by your power and by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you as we...